Mogan Carla Mornings, B96, with two of the cast and the director of The Greatest Hits, which is coming to Hulu tomorrow, actually, April 12th. We were very, very fortunate in that we got to see the movie kind of before everybody else does. And, you know, when you get to see things on an exclusive, that feels super cool. <laughs> so thank you, first off. So excited to introduce Lucy Boynton, right? Justin H. Min, who are two of the big stars in the movie. And then, of course, our director here, Ned Benson. Welcome, guys. Thanks Thank for having you. us. So I guess uh, tell us a little bit, you know, as you're going around and you're talking about this movie with different people, what is really the message that you're trying to to send to people that would inspire them to want to go see it? Um, I think the emotional power of music, um, its ability, you know, the so a song's ability to really take us back to moments in our lives and to remind us to live, too. Yeah. Uh, this sort of double-edged power that, uh, I think music has in terms of just, you know, being a time travel mechanism, but yeah. also like reminding us to get outside and dance again. Yeah. How did you work through, because obviously you are traveling back in time, but this is like an emotional movie. How did you work through making sure that it didn't become cheesy? Like, you know what I mean? Back to the future type of uh, Sonic looking things. Well, Back to the Future is one of my favorite movies of all time. <laughs> so let's just. Uh, but it's not a rom com. I, um, I think uh, we really. Ch I mean, I think that's a testament to really the actors. We we really tried to ground the movie in reality and emotion, and make things feel. I think as practical and grounded in the filmmaking as well. So it didn't feel like a sci-fi movie per se, but everything was kind of like stemming through emotion and character and really Harriet's personal experience or psychological experience and this question of like is this actually happening or is this in her mind and then you know this beautiful relationship that blossoms with David without giving it they don't give it too much. Yeah. yeah, no, I'm not going to lie. At first, I was like, is she just kind of going through it? I mean, it's been two years, and she misses her person. And I, and all of everyone else around her is like, girl, you got to move on. And I was so glad when you finally gave my guy a chance. You were like, oh, he's cute. And I was like, yes, do it, girl, do it. You said, stop the car. I said, yes, stop it. <laughs> Did you? Uh, how did you guys create a chemistry and a connection just for one another on the screen? I just want you to do a full commentary of the film <laughs> from like start. To just finish. a POV. Yeah, yeah. I was, uh, I, I was in that. it the whole time. Love that. That's funny. Um, we were lucky enough to have a rehearsal period, I think, which is quite rare to get with film and television, I think. Um, but yeah, so we got time to really like. Because obviously when you first read the script, you're reading it in isolation. You're projecting your own self and experience onto it. And then when you get into a room with everyone you're working with, new elements of it really open up. And you, you kind of have different access to each character. And so just getting to talk through it all and, and really kind of empathize with those characters individually and then together on their journey through kind of grieving together and then bringing each other into uh, a new possibility without trying to give too much away, <laughs> dot, dot, yeah. dot, dot, dot. W well, so, yeah, and, and we obviously don't want to give a lot away either, but... So in the end... <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> this is how it ends. Um, really, a, a lot of the movie is about grief, more so even than I think it is about time travel. It's about how um, people manage grief, which can be so complicated, and everybody has a different timetable with, with grief, right? Like, some people move on quickly, and they're able to just jump back on the horse and live their life. Um, and if this is too deep, don't answer. Was there something specific, like a, a real-life grief that you were able to channel, uh, each of you, in those characters, to really bring that emotion? Uh, because to me, it was so believable, which, I mean, you're actors, so I guess that's what your, your goal is. <laughs> that's your job. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I think... Um, We've all grieved I in many different ways. I think the obvious example is when we lose someone we love, you know, physically. But I think the thing that Ned also really explores in the movie is like grieving relationships, people in your life who are not, they haven't passed away, but you've lost those people in your lives. And even I think when we grieve parts of ourselves that are changing. So I think we all um, understand grief in its many forms and iterations. And I'm glad that our film was tapping was able to tap into a lot of those things. You're so you're so soft spoken. I'm listening to you, and I'm like, oh, it's like listening to one of the records that you're playing. Yeah. When you, <laughs> um, how did you choose those records that, that were going to be in it? Because you chose like an old timey one for a certain part, and so I want to know how the process of choosing the music really went into the film. 
Um, yeah, it, there was, it was kind of a few different, there were different reasons for different tracks, but a lot of it was very personal, a lot of music that I love, a lot of music that actually sort of throws me back in time, but really with the music supervisor, Mary Ramos, and, you know, some of the people, like the Ryan Lott, the composer, and DJ Harvey, who worked on the movie as well as a music consultant, I think we really looked at songs that were lyrically helping tell the story. So if you're listening closely to the lyrics in each of these tracks throughout the movie, they're actually telling you what's going on emotionally in each scene. So, um, you know, if you think about Leon Haywood, Don't Push It, Don't Force It, or Loud Places by Jamie XX, or even This Is The Day with The The, which kind of opens the movie, all of these songs were really helping the storytelling and giving you subtext for what is going on in each scene. So we were really... We paid a lot of attention in terms of finding tracks that I loved and everybody kind of like sort of could drop into, but also were helping the storytelling as well. It's it's fun, uh, the use of music in the movie. Uh, B96, you know, we we play the music you always loved and the best of what's new. And, and I was thinking about last night, like if Harriet was listening to B96, it would be a total disaster because we play <laughs> so many great like throwbacks. Um, uh, let me ask you, uh, what year would you go back to, uh, Lucy, if you could time travel, and what song would take you back? You personally. Oh, man. Um, instantly, I go, I mean, I, I live in London. I grew up in London. I, I would, I, the 60s and 70s, the oh. music scene in London, I think, is so iconic. Uh, so... I don't know how to narrow this down. I would go back to, uh, I don't know, specific, like mid 60s, London in the 60s. And uh, I'd use probably like a Beatles song to get me there. Oh, or like a Bowie that. song. I do too. Yeah. Oh, no, that's, that's amazing. Really I feel to like down. music really does transport you into different places. And I think that you show that very well in this film. Um, Especially because you're just you're searching for that one song, and one of my favorite things about music is when you get when you first hear a song for the first time, and you know that it's a good one, but you don't know the name and you don't know the artist, and and so you trying to search for it, I thought was a really incredible part of the film. So I really did want to congratulate for it, you for that. But what I thought was funny is that there's a part where it's not a song that brings you back; it's a jingle. Oh, that's right, and we all know that jingle. <laughs> Because they just get stuck in your head. Um, how did that idea kind of come about? Because we're so musically inclined in the film, and then you're like, actually, let's throw a little Easter egg in there. Yeah, I think because Harriet's sort of characteristic is really about isolating herself at home and controlling the music she listens to because she's afflicted by music, essentially, um, that safe space at home or that isolation that she's in is this place where she sort of like has all the music that she knows you know that's safe yeah that's safe music versus unsafe music and I think once she leaves her house it's like you know all hell breaks loose because music comes from so you know car radios music comes from cafes music comes from everywhere and I think it was just thinking about what are these random things that you know are these random jingles or these random songs that come into our lives and what's one that could resonate with everybody so, you know, I thought that about like, like cars for kids. yeah, exactly. So like, <laughs> is it cereal commercials? Is it, what, what is that thing? So anyway, that, that's where we wound up landing and, um, it was it, fun. It was fun. Yeah. I liked it. Yeah. Um, I, can I ask you if you had, and this is sort of, I guess it's not off topic, but adjacent. What's your carpool karaoke song? Like if you had to choose a song that you were going to perform in front of the world in like a live <laughs> way what would it be um i'd probably kill myself before doing that but um <laughs> if i had to uh probably where's the love by the black eyed peas because oh, okay. it has the rap and the little yeah. melody that i enjoy oh, so you think you, you can rap yes you can flow i don't think i can rap i <laughs> oh, can he knows rap. He can rap. yeah All thank right. you well the black eyed peas are actually here today so <laughs> 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 no okay <laughs> we're not gonna make you perform oh what about for you God, my go-to, I, I mean, my go-to like karaoke song is the Bradley Cooper part of Shallow. Oh. So I'd probably just take yes. that uh, and just ride with the yeah. humiliation. <laughs> the, with the humiliation. Well, there is a point where you, can I say this, that you two sing in the movie. Um, 
uh, are either <laughs> of you do you, either of you consider yourself singers on any level? Absolutely, and at a professional level, if you've seen oh, that yeah. karaoke scene, one hundred percent. Yes. No, I will forever be trying to prove that I can sing better than that. <laughs> oh no, you he sings like an angel though. Like has actually a beautiful <laughs> voice. If you guys have seen Beef on Netflix, you should it, check it out. <laughs> it was uh, a very high song. That song, very high pitched. <laughs> it was out of my range, and I'm not sure why Ned chose it, but. Here for precisely <laughs> that reason. Well, it's it's out of your vocal range, but it wasn't out of your emotional range oh, in the film. Wow. Ooh, did you see that? <laughs> wow. 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 <laughs> so when you actually read the script, speaking of emotional range, and you saw that your character was falling for how you described, or your sister in the movie described, a wounded bird, right? Um, did you think, like, oh, my gosh, I would never in real life go for a person that was grieving this much? Or did you relate and you think, wow, you know, here is my character helping somebody else through such a special and sad moment. It's a really good question. Yeah, I, I, th I love the fact that they connect through grief. And I think there are people in my life who I connect through through various means, whether it's grief or some heartbreak or heartache that they're going through. I think those are really those moments where you do feel deeply connected to someone because you're both in a sort of vulnerable and raw state. And when you can sort of be with someone through that season, you know, that meme, like, if you can't have me at this, you can't have me at my best, <laughs> you know? <laughs> it's that thing, like, if you can see someone sort of at the rock bottom going through something and you can be there for them, that, that relationship becomes that much more strengthened when hopefully that person comes out of that season. Do you think that it's possible to love two people at the same time? Because I think in the movie, you're struggling with that. Ned, do you think it's possible <laughs> to love two I, people? I believe we have the capacity in our heart to love more than one person, whether you're with them or not. I think, I feel, if I think about all the relationships in my life, I'm so grateful for those relationships, and I love those people from my past because they've informed me and prepared me for you know meeting my wife and, and being the best version of myself for her. And so, yes, they all kind of teach you about what love is and what it's supposed to be. And so, yeah, I believe we have the capacity in our heart to love more than one person. Oh, when you put it like that, I guess I'll thank my exes for the heartbreak. Yeah. <laughs> Even the ones that cheated. Thanks, wow. dudes. <laughs> <laughs> They're getting called out right now. Do you want to mention names? They're or? also here okay. along with the Black Eyed Peas. No, that was a beautiful answer. Thank you. Uh, Lucy, can I ask you this? So you did a, a whole movie in an American accent. Um, and I've always wondered this at, from an actor's perspective. I feel like in this world we hear a lot of Americans trying to do variations of British, British accents. Sorry, was that you good? Yeah, nailed it. <laughs> um, I, I did not detect at all. It was it was after the fact when I was like, ooh, let me do some investigation. I did not detect that at all. Like that wasn't on my radar at, our, at, at all. So you, you did a very good accent. When you plan that, do you go, okay, I'm playing a character who lives in America on the West Coast. Are there any like words maybe that you struggled with or or perhaps an hour. Yeah. <laughs> um, what was that experience like for you? I think I, I think it is easier to go from a British accent to an American accent. I mean, we've I've grown up watching so much American TV. I was also born in the States, so I learned to speak with an American accent, which I think is like a kind of cheat. Oh. Um, but yeah, I think it's like it's such a technical thing, but it, when you're surrounded by it, so getting to live in LA while filming this, the whole cast and crew were American, so it is constantly in your ear. And also then if you trip up on any kind of words, you have a whole source of people who can, you can kind of parrot. But, um, but I think, yeah, coming from a British accent, it's like the kind of the rounded R's, you know, you have to kind of, I don't know, ease into and get really used to. So yeah. I end up going into this like awful hybrid transatlantic accent while I'm filming, oh, and it's kind fun. of insufferable. But Did you hate it? <laughs> or, did, or, or were you like, we're just going to let it Do ride? Hate it? No, she's brilliant. You know, like she's, she was, it was incredible even in rehearsal just to hear us like switch in and out of it. And, uh, you know, obviously that's why they're, you know, all they're these who actors they are. are yeah. Exactly. Oh, how did you choose them to be the characters, the main ones? Like, um, I, you know, I think I'd known of their work and obviously we sent the scripts to them and, you know, they were excited enough about the script to have a meeting and I think upon meeting both of them you know all the actors you get this gut instinct you know we met in a coffee shop in LA and she walked in 
the coffee shop and I was like, oh, this is like moment one. I was like, this the is Harriet, you know? <laughs> And uh, and then Justin and I met on a, a Zoom um, and had this kind of like incredibly open, vulnerable conversation. And I think just as a human being, I was like, this this actor has and person just has so many qualities that I I sort of saw in David uh, the character. So it it you know just it it becomes it y your gut kind of says like, oh, I I love these people. I hope they want to work with me, and they did. So. You know, I feel like uh, The Greatest Hits, which is uh, released to Hulu tomorrow, I feel like this movie really does have something for everyone in that there's obviously there's the music element. Um, there is the friend that is is dealing with the grieving friend who wants to be as supportive as possible. Um, but there is a really relatable side to that where it become where it can become exhausting as the friend of somebody who is going through grief. And I know that's not a nice thing polite thing to say but i think that uh that's that, real. That, that that actor and that character represents that well um and then of course there's the time travel part of it which we all fantasize about um if you could go back in the past i, I want to as ask all three of you this if there's anything in your life that you could go back in the past and change would you or would you allow the past to run its course and take you on the trajectory that you're now on Whoever feels ready. <laughs> I know you guys are going to have beautiful answers, so I'm going to go first. Um, I don't know. I think we've seen s so many iterations where it's like where you change the past and you don't know the repercussions and the ripple effect that it has. And I think everything that I can immediately think of, I have then learned from. So even if it's behavior that you would correct or a moment that was painful, the fact that I'm now thinking of it can reference it and will never repeat it, therefore will never ha be in that situation again or, or create that is something that I wouldn't want to give back. Right. Um, so uh, yeah, I, I don't know that I would change anything. Okay. I'm surprised that I say that, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> so one time in eighth grade. <laughs> <laughs> the reason we ask, we have video. Oh. Um, <laughs> something that comes top of mind, I mean, I agree with Lucy, like there would be something scary about potentially changing everything, but I think I went to college too quickly. I would have taken a gap year, you know, mm. um, and, and try, to try to figure things out and not put myself in crippling student debt for a while. Uh, so that's the sort of obvious answer that comes to the top of hey, mind. Hey, that's fair. <laughs> I think there were a lot of n no's that I said in my life where I just wish I had said yes. Like, even just for like a night out with friends in New York where I was like, oh, I need to stay in and do work or like a trip that my brothers went on where I was like, no, I need to stay in LA and do work. And like in hindsight, I was like, I got nothing done. And like, I missed an incredible trip with my brothers, you know? So I feel it's just, which sort of like is what the movie's about. It's a lot of live about saying yes and living your life more and getting outside um, a bit more uh, and just being open to, to life more so that that I think it just would have been a few more yeses instead of those no's I like that I feel like a lot of people we're going into summer pretty soon and a lot of people talk about doing the summer of yes where you just say yes to more things and you open yourself to more opportunities so I'm very glad that you guys said yes to this interview yes <laughs> and that you said yes to this movie because we got an absolute awesome experience and um, we really hope that everyone checks it out because it's really good yeah. Makes me tear up. The greatest <laughs> hits on Hulu tomorrow. Thank you guys so much. Thank Thanks you. for Thanks having us. Thank you. Thank you.